This is Aaron, the metal theologian, and um, we're going to do five random records today, and I was actually going to do it out of the rock section, but Spencer has a little bit of a wound, um, and he doesn't feel like following me around, so we're going to do 45s out of the punk section, which is sort of inspired by um, Zeke the Vinyl Geek, who uh, was showing some stuff. Um, it's actually only about this much. I don't have what I used to have, but there's some pretty interesting shit in here, so it's probably worth showing off, and it's not the sort of thing I usually talk about, so it might be fun to check out. Um, Alright, so before we go any farther, though, first of all, we're listening to, a couple people have talked about this in videos, uh, most notably uh, Mr. Uh, Vinyl in the Van, who uh, found an original of this for fucking ridiculously low sum of money, and I'm kind of jelly. But uh, this is my uh, trusty reissue of Easter Everywhere by the 13th Floor Elevators. And this is my personal favorite Elevators record. I think it's fantastic. I like their version of uh, It's All Over Baby Blue more than the original by Bob Dylan. And um, look at how young Rocky Erickson looks there, like before he had all his electroshock and all that other shit that fucked him out of his brain. Um, all right, anyway, awesome record. Fucking classic. Um... And everything on the International Artists record is worth hearing, at least, just like this record. But uh, the elevators are the best, except maybe for the Red Crayola. That's kind of tough. Um, all right, so anyway, I'm thirsty. And actually, this isn't really going to be a thirst-quenching one. This is uh, another score from the Asian market, okay? This is a little Korean thing. And there it is in Korean. And I don't know how the hell to pronounce that, because I've studied a few languages, but Korean is not one of them. And uh, much like Japanese, Korean is kind of its own thing, is linguistically speaking. So, um, but if you look at the other side, it's Shikye Rice Punch. And it actually says shake well, because the second ingredient in this is rice. I'm expecting there to be little chunks of rice in this, like a horchata or something, maybe. Although I don't know if it's going to be like that, or if it's going to be like actual like rice that maybe I should be drinking with a straw. So there's only one way to find out. And, um, Spencer's thinking he might wuss out on this, which, you know, is the way it goes. He's had a hard day, and I'm sure this is going to be delicious, so I'm happy to drink it myself, but we'll see what happens when the time comes, so. Yeah, this is supposed to shake it, but I've been dicked over by these things before, so yeah, you see that? <laughs> Looks thin, actually. It doesn't look like a horchata. Can you see that? Whatever, here we go. Alright, it has some of that sort some of that horchata flavor to it, but it's really different because it's not thick and milky like that. There's like a little bit of rice in here, but it's not like much. I mean, maybe it's all at the bottom. I didn't shake it enough, but uh, I don't think so. Do you want a sip of this? It's a little bit horchata-y, but it's, it has a little bit more of sort of a syrupy taste. And that sounds really shitty when I say it that way, but it's actually not unpleasant at all. Like, um... I don't know how to describe it. It's um that looks weird. It tastes like honey. That's the syrupy thing that I'm trying to sort of put my finger on. I don't think there's actually any honey in here, but it kinda has that uh uh like sort of a syrupy quality, sort of like honey, but not like uh, in a cloying way, like you know, a high fructose corn syrup or something like that. The ingredients are water, rice, sugar, malt, ginger, citrus extract powder, and some, you know, some other shit that's just like probably preservatives or whatever. Actually, it's vitamin C and something else, but um, yeah, so it's not actual honey, but it kind of has that last chance. You sure you don't want it because I'm gonna finish it. Mm. Is that all the rice? Alright, so we had a little mishap. I actually ran out of space on the things. So just because I have an SD card now doesn't mean there aren't going to be any hiccups in my videos. Just to be clear, like, there are going to be little fuck ups just for old time's sake. Anyway, so, like, the last, so the second last sip here, I'm saving the last one, had, like, all the rice in it. And it's weird because it's like, it feels like the husks or something like that. Except it's not, like, unpleasant, you know? 
Which is kind of like a little fibery, you know? Which is good. There's probably no fiber in here to speak of, though. Actually, 1.8 grams, which is, according to this, 7% of my daily allowance. Based on a 2,000 calorie diet. Alright, so anyway, that's done. Let's bust out some of these records. Oh, actually, no. First, uh, let's, first of all, why don't you show off your thing? So, long story short. Here, let me... Here, show your thing off. Your boo-boo. I was trying not to say boo-boo, but I couldn't think of the other word. I don't care. Your scrape, that's what it is. This isn't really much of a cut. Alright, so this is awesome. Okay, so Spencer was riding his bike around, and what happened? Um, so long story short, I hit a goose. Like, the bulbous part of a goose. At about 15 miles an hour. On my bike. And it knocked me off. And, and I... Just keep telling There's me, There's a... Uh, Relax and tell it. Basically, I was coming home from a... Um, I was running the grocery store and I was biking home. And it was raining, so the road was slippery and I was trying to be fast. So I wouldn't get... As, so the groceries wouldn't get wet. And... Um, when I'm coming home from the grocery store, there's a um, cor I need to turn the corner from the main road onto the road that leads to our house. And there's a sharp turn, and there's like a little pond there. Or I guess it's more of a creek that all the geese like to hang out in. There are little ponds all over the place in the Charleston area, just in case you don't know, like wetlands I've never seen before, like so we move here. If you like, look at a map, they're like, like, you know, it's like the coast, the eastern coast, but there are all these little inlets and shit. There's a ton of water here. So anyway, go on, sorry. So there are little ponds all over the place. So this is really common what he's talking about. Go on. The geese are a plague here. Um, anyway, so I turn the corner and, like, a gaggle of 20 or so geese, like, run out at me as I'm turning the corner. And I basically get ambushed by them, by the uh, by the twenty geese. And no matter where I turned, I would hit a goose. So I ended up hitting the goose. It knocked me off my bike. Um, knocked the groceries off my bike, and knocked the chain off of my bike. Uh huh. And then what happened? And then Where the, the geese, geese also got mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> and they chased me around for a minute as I'm bleeding a lot from the fall. Do they, like, peck you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Spencer got assaulted by a bunch of crazed geese. And he got yeah. pecked. Although the pecking apparently wasn't much of an issue, which is kind of good to hear, because I've heard the geese are kind of mean. Maybe I'm thinking of swans. I don't know, some of those animals. Oh, no, birds. geese are awful. Like, you That's should never... see You should see the Trident campus. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, they're all over the place. We have a ton of geese. Like, I think it's one of the places they fucking fly to from the north. But... Like, that picture I showed you earlier, the drawing with all the turrets, that's like a photograph of the parking lot. Well, it's like that in California, too, actually. We get, except those wild turkeys out there. I remember they're shitting. I thought it was like a... Yeah, and turkeys going to assault you, too. Yeah. Well, I was kind of a mole. Well, actually, turkeys can be kind of mean, too. Turkeys can be mean, but they're not, not as like aggressive. Geese. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the geese will just start crossing the street. Like, you'll be driving, like, so there'll be a whole bunch of people stop. It's because there are a bunch of geese just fucking dicking around on the street. You're like, come on. You're dinner. Like, if you're edible, you shouldn't be doing shit like that. You know? I mean, that's just tempting fate. I mean, if you're not only edible, but delicious, you shouldn't be like... Yeah, okay. So, on to the records. Unless there's any more. Is there an epilogue or anything? That's a story, though, right? Yeah, I mean, just moral of the story, be careful when you turn corners, because you could get <laughs> Because there might be maniacal yes. geese. All right. Because there could be just, like, a crazy swarm of ravenous geese. Yeah, I don't know if they're ravenous. All right. 
So here's the first one we pulled out. This is Not Now, No Way by The Pagans. And this actually is an original on the Drome label. If you know your Cleveland shit, uh, the only shit that came out on Drome were Pagans 45s and the Lepers 45, which I think I still have, but I might not. Um, I don't have all of them. In fact, I think this is the only one I still have. But, um... Yeah, man. So Not Now, No Way is just a cool, like, straight-ahead punk song, and so is I, Juvenile, really. My very favorite Pagan's material is on the Pink album, which is a little bit more sort of weird, and a little bit later than this stuff, but this is, like, I think their last one from the 70s. It's probably 79 or something like that. Yeah, 79. It's produced by David Thomas, also known as Crocus Behemoth. And, uh... Let's pick out the next one. I'm tempted to throw that on, but I might pick, the odds of me picking something else I want to throw on are pretty good, so I'm going to pass on it. Alright, here we go. What's this? Oh, okay, here we go. Alright, this is a Styrene's 45. Alright, this is, um... Again, it's a Cleveland thing. That's a big chunk of what I have left, is like Cleveland 45. So this is the Styrene, this Styrene Money Band, and this is uh, the Radial Arm Saws 45, which is on the Mustard label, which was their label too. I think that the only shit that came out on Mustard was Styrene's Records, and there's an Andrew Klimek 45. Actually, I just think there are one or two other things. I don't think there was an Electric Eels. Actually, there might have been an Electric Eels. I think the Bunnies 45 might have been on... Um, Mustard. So anyway, the Mustard label is awesome, and pretty much anything on Mustard Records is worth having. So I love these Styrene's 45s. Um, their album, not so much. It's kind of... It's a little more songy and a little more goofy, and this shit is just more, like, weird. And, um you know, unorthodox. So this is pretty well indicative of the kind of punk that I've kept around, you know, quote-unquote punk. I've talked about this before. I really have very little straight punk anymore. I used to have a ton of shit that I probably should have kept, like the adverts and all sorts of shit like that. But um, there are a few things I kept, and there's a little pop in it, but this is a hard-to-find 45. record. I played this so much. Oh my god. Alright. So that's two records, right? What are you doing? Are you looking for something to show off on your phone? No, I'm just... Something else up. I'm pulling up the artist's rendition that I showed you earlier. Um, okay, this is an Eric Random 45. Um... You know, for a while, the whole, like, Manchester thing was really hip with all these bands like Stone Roses and shit. And I thought those were mostly crap. But there were a few really cool Manchester bands, like, in the first half of the 80s. This is 81. Like, um, Eric Random. I like the Diagram Brothers. Ludus isn't bad, although I don't have anything anymore. The Mud Hutters. The Buzzcocks actually came over that, out of that, too. And, um, a lot of that shit was on. What was the label? I can't remember. Uh, oh, and New Hormones. The first Buzzcocks 45 was actually on the New Hormones label, which is like a Manchester label. There's a, there's a lot of really cool shit on that label. This Eric Random, though, is actually on a French label called Les Disques, Les Disques du Crépuscule. And I think this is all just Eric Random playing by himself, yeah. Made in Belgium. And, uh, yeah, this is just kind of weirdo shit, you know? Uh, I don't want to interrupt the styrings for this, but I'll leave it out because it's damn good, and if I don't pick something better coming up, then I'll throw it on for a minute. Ah, what the hell, let me just throw it on for a minute. That's about half the song of the styrings anyway, maybe two-thirds. All right. So yeah, Eric Random, probably his claim to fame was that he actually played with Nico on one of her records, like in the mid-80s or something like that. But uh, that's about as close as he came. Um, some of the shit is kind of sought after, but I don't know if anyone really cares. Oh, fuck, this thing's in worse shape than I thought. That sucks. Looks like it was over-cleaned, actually. 
Yeah, I should need to wipe, give this thing a wipe. Um, alright. Which side is side one? Oh, 23 skidoo, I think. Alright, here we go. Yeah, that sounds kind of shitty. Seats to be cleaned. So there you go. Yeah, this is the kind of punk that I still have. So, um, how many records that was that? Three or four? That's three, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we do like a little like 45 listening sessions. See, a lot of people bitch about 45s. Like, they're a pain in the ass. Like, because, uh, you know, you have to sit there and flip them. But I think the experience is different, especially now, you know what I mean, where you don't have like turntables that you stack them on and shit like they did in the 70s, which is just as well because they're terrible for your records, right? But it's like you just sort of sit down and hang out like this, sort of like we're doing right now, and you put them on and enjoy them and take them off. And I mean, I usually listen to both sides if I'm actually having a little session like this, but you immerse yourself a little bit more, you know, whereas I'll put on like a LP when I'm like we're playing Nintendo or reading a book or something like that, you know, or watching a kung fu movie with the sound turned down. All right, so let's go through here again. Let's see what's next. All right, here's one. That's a good one. This is the Germ Free Adolescence 45 by the X-Ray Specs. Now, this is pretty much straight punk shit, and this is one of the bands that I kept because I actually love their X-Ray Specs. So check out that label, that awesome custom label to the original press, and that funny cover. Look at that. What's the B side of this actually? Age. Okay. There you go. I actually remember that song, but I'm pretty sure that's on the album. Um, the one I have that's actually even better is uh, this one. This is the first 45. That's so bondage up yours. That's an original too. It's on green vinyl though. Green vinyl. Um. Yeah, I have more styrenes and shit, too, but, uh, okay, whatever, let's keep going. So that's four, right? Yeah, see, I dig the hell out of this record. Can you check this out? All right, what's this? Oh, man, here's a classic. All right, this is the Electric Eels, man. This is the real thing. This is the fucking, uh, Cyclotron and Agitated 45. It's the original on Rough Trade. This has been reissued once or twice, but uh, the originals don't turn up every day. I'm glad I got this one I did. The fucking German on this is ridiculous. Like, they put it all in German, and, like, it's all fucking stupid. Like, if you actually know German, it's complete bullshit. Um, yeah, but this is cut in 1975. They actually had a drummer at this point in their career because for a, most of the Electric Eels, for most of their existence, they didn't have a drummer. Uh, they never had a bass player, but it was just two guitars and then the singer, right? So um, it was kind of ridiculous. Um, I think I'm going to throw it on. What the hell? I mean, the Eels are so fucking classic. Um, their shit's, there have you know, been a couple different LP compilations with stuff, and um, I think that 45 has been reissued. But like John Morton, who is kind of the main guy behind the band, was... Uh, was kind of proud of it in retrospect and sort of came out of the woodwork maybe shit 15 years ago and has been sort of pushing the memory of the eels and that's cool i've heard that uh davey got all in jesus and like doesn't want to have anything to do with the eagle with the eels now which is a shame because this is some great shit um god which one is side one all right here we go Maybe we can pick one more because we're playing this thing anyway. And this is Cyclotron. It sounds so shitty. Alright, let's pick one more just for grids. How are we doing for time? Oh, 15 minutes. Yeah? Okay, we got another five minutes. Alright. Alright, here, this is another good one, man. This is the Residence Baby Fingers. So I know there's some Residence fans out there probably watching this. 
Death in Barstow. That's a great song title. Uh, Flight of the Bumble Roach. That's a little bit more ridiculous. Melancholy Lassie. So anyway, that's the back. Check that out. And the label on the weird. This is a uh, 77. And then actually 81. So I don't know exactly when this came out. Okay, the material in this EP was from the Fingerprints sessions. It was intended to be the third side of the Fingerprints album. So there you go. So classic era residence. This is really good shit, too. Um, I'm going to assume that if you're watching this, you probably know the residents. You probably know the Electric Eels, too. But um, if you don't know the residents, you need to spend some time with them. Um, so there we go. Five records. I uh, typically the residents on for that. Oh, let's put on the residence for a minute. Hell with it. <laughs> Here we go. I don't know if we're going to be able to hear, like, any of what you just said, by the way. Yeah? That's okay. That was so loud. Yeah, if you didn't hear any of what I just said, fuck it. It wasn't that important anyway. I was just talking about how great the residents are. See, you already knew that. If you're watching this, you probably already know how awesome the residents are, so... That's all. Um... I think this plays at 33, but I haven't played it in so long, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say. Oh, we'll figure it out together. It's a little dusty. Alright, this is 45. It sounds like shit. I'll change to 33. Yeah, this is more like the residence. Yeah, so this is the kind of shit that's still around here. Right next to it, man, we've got this fucking red transistor. An ecstatic piece. This is great. This was Von Elmo's band before uh, Von Elmo, and this is the only record that... Uh, Ever came out. Here's a Less Raving Sounds 45, another Cleveland one on the Terminal label with an authentic piece of newspaper in there with the LRS spray painted in there. This actually has uh, Earth Boy Dream of Angel, which was on the uh, Pagans record. So uh, it's interesting. It's an earlier version of it. Um, So, um, leave you a little bit of the residence, which is a damn fine way to leave you, if I do say so myself. So, thanks for watching. That was six random records from the punk section, and I'll see you next time.